was left center field and it reached the fence on about two bounces. This is Brad Hadwin standing in, with the right fielder for Tempest. Swings the first pitch. It didn't see that one, Bob. Did you see what happened there? I'm just as out of my vision. It's a fly ball out. Fly ball out, right? It's taken in I right field. Just that. I just can't get that little corner of the right field there. Yeah, it was Sarah Casson who took the catch in right field. So one down, runner on second base. And the battery is Liddy Mitchell. He was a great help to us, Bob, before the game started with lineups and stuff. Got to point out. First pitch in. Swings at it. Gets past shortstop. It's into the outfield. And she gets single for efforts. Emma Agostini stops on third. So the runners on first and third. Pass it! And back to the top of the order for Tempest with Simon Timms. Lenny Mitchell works for BSUK in Manchester as, as a coach. She helps with youth softball up there and a lot of tournaments that uh, the Manchester Softball League runs. Swing at the first pitch, that's going to go foul. Oh. Are you sensing uh, a little momentum swing? <laughs> Immediately, I mean, 8-0 to start the game, and since then they've teared off a little bit and Tempest have just found their way. It's but it, as you said, right in the very first, it's, it's, it's seven inning games. So you have plenty of time to come back. Eight nothing zero, Bob. I watched the Mets last night throw away a 9-0 lead in Major League Baseball, so... Eventually won in extra innings, but they still gave up nine runs. Wow. And they should have cruised the victory. Oh, yeah. right past the pitcher. It's outfield. Agostini comes home. Solid line drive. Back up the middle. Here's uh, Zoe LaRue. So he had a single in the first inning. So, pitch wide for a ball. Two balls, no strikes. These players will, of course, know each other very well because most of them play Manchester League softball. The uh, Camels are actually a league team. Tempest aren't, but they're made up of a lot of players who play in Manchester league teams. Swings. It goes foul. Just went out before the third base. Brings LaRue back to the plate. Two and two count. One down. Runners on first and second for Tempest. Oh, lovely hit. It's, it's caught, that's caught. Two down. Line drive in the left center field. Nicely picked off. Yeah, I didn't see the outfielder there. They were just shielded from <laughs> view. I didn't see I didn't see anyone in that gap, and then the outfielder came behind. I think it's a shortstop. And I could see him. So, Alvarez back at the plate. Pitch. Strike one to Hurling Alvarez. <laughs> Two balls a little deep. Yeah. Two and one count. <laughs> Base is fielded. Runner comes home. Oh, 
that's an RBI for Erling Alvarez. Tims is held at third. Alvarez at first. Another run cut off the deficit. There's three in the inning and suddenly what was 8 nothing is 8-6. Michelle oh, Sean hit. drives the ball over the head of the left center fielder. One run scores. She's to second. Second run comes in. All the way to third. Safe at third. Triple that's for Michelle Shaw. That's a great triple for Michelle Shaw. Who's a very young player. She's come to slow pitch from uh, GB fast pitch. She played a number of age group teams and she really drove that ball. Very strong player. Chance to tie the game or take the lead. That's high. Caught. Oh, that's that a great catch. Brings the end to the inning. But great catch have cut it back to eight to seven as we end. Eight eight. Eight eight, sorry. top of the third inning. Evans puts it high up. Should be caught, but it drops. He's safe on first. And Camels have the first hitter aboard. It's Gareth Evans dropping a bloop signal in the left field. That uh, Bermuda Triangle where the left fielder and the shortstop could not quite get there. Sarah Casson strokes the ball to left field. That's an easy catch for a change. One down. Held up there for a while, didn't it? Just plenty of time to get in position. So, Matthew Green at the plate. Gareth Evans still on first base. No reaction whatsoever from him, too. <laughs> Straight to the pitcher. The second chance for double play. It throws first. Green is safe. But the runner's out at second. So no harm done. The overthrow back to first was high, but the batter couldn't advance. So two down now. The runner on first. And the batter will be the catcher, Jacqueline Ng. Swings at the first pitch over the pitcher. Just missed it. Touch his glove. And passes green to second. She's at first. So she pokes a single into center field. And that turns over the lineup and brings Nathan Barrett back to the plate. Which means Camels still have a shot at putting some runs on the board in this inning. Something they were very much want to do to stop the momentum that's been with Tempest for the last inning and a half. Eight runs in that first inning, nothing since. 
Nathan wasn't too sure about that strike call, but it's strike one. As it gets past the first base into the outfield. Green's going to come home. No throw, and it's safe. And after trailing 8-0. Tied at 8-8, eight eight and now it's 9-8. Yeah, Campbell's are back in the lead. Why one? It's a very high-scoring game, Bob. Any bouncing ball like that that just hits off this rock-hard infield surface and kind of shoots on through, which is what that did. Hitting to left field. Good catch. That brings us to the end of the top of the third. It's 9-8 in favour of the Camels. Nice catch by Emma Lott in left field. <laughs> Pitch over the pitcher. Just missed it. Touch his glove. That turns over the lineup and brings Nathan Barrett back to the plate. Which means Camels still have a shot at putting some runs on the board this inning. Something they would very much want to do to stop the... Bottom of the third inning, Camels lead nine to eight. This is Emma Lott leading off for Tempest. So she finished top half inning, she's starting in the bottom half. It's called Ball. Stop. Can't collect it cleanly. As a result, she's safe on first. Nathan Barrett tried for a little scoop of that uh, short hop. Bounced off his glove back into the infield, and uh, Emma Lott was able to make it to first base. So Tempest have their first runner on. And here's Billy Lycouris, the second base player. And someone batted in lefty, which we haven't seen much of today. No, not a lot of left-handed batters in slow pitch. Many in fast pitch. We'll see a couple more in the uh, NSL 1 final game. High fly ball. Oh, good take. Second base, but Gareth Evans went back to get that one. So there's one out, the number lot still on first base. Yes, Agostini comes to the plate. And she hit the ball a very long way the last time up. Pitch is wide for a ball. bit deep so, so two balls no strikes swings high in the air well taken it's two down so lot will have to stay at first Brad Hadwin back to the plate. Let's see if he can bring Lot home. Takes ball one. 
Just for a second, I thought we were going to go for that. Hits it into the ground. Shortstop has it. Plays at second. That brings us to the end of the inning. It remains 9 8 in favour of the Camels. pitcher Adam Huger was leading off. Line single to left field. It's just a single. Ball comes in. He Looks fought about second, but they managed to get the ball back in and keep him at first. That'll bring up Charlotte Green, the uh, Cowboys first base player. Straight to short top chance for a double play, which they do brilliantly. 6-3 double play, hurling Alvarez to uh, Zoe LaRue. And suddenly, Cabells have two out, no one on. Max Fagan coming to the plate. Wide of the plate for first ball. Swing straight <laughs> to Alvarez, the shortstop. And that's the uh, top of the fourth over already, Bob. Yeah, line drive right at him. He just had to put his glove in front of his face. And the score remains Camels 9, Tempest 8. Back to Farnham Park, it's the bottom of the fourth inning. Mitchell's about to start us off for Tempest. She lets the first pitch go past. It's a ball. Strike call. One and one the count. Then he uh, singled in her last at bat and scored one of the uh, runs when Tempest put up five in the second inning. Two and two the count. Swings straight to second base. He can't collect it. She should be able to make first base in time, says umpire Jess Sandu. So, Lenny Mitchell safely aboard. One on, no out. Ball was hit right at Gareth Evans, but it's hard to trust the bounces on the surface. 
squirted away from him just enough. So now like we're back at the top of the order for Tempest with Simon Timms. High fly ball into right field, and it drops. drops. It's in play. Yeah. Mitchell's going to third. And now we've got and a runner hung up between it. second and third. And he gets back, Simon gets back to second. It's a high fly ball down the right field line. The right center fielder came over to try and get it. The uh, right fielder hung back a little bit. It might have been her ball. and. Um, Result is that Tempest have runners in second and third with no outs. Just thought though they might should have got one run home in that situation, but managed to get the ball back into the diamond, stop the runners. Strike to Zoe LaRue. Swings over second base. It drops. She's on the first. Mitchell comes home, second runner, two runs score. And Tempest takes their first lead of the game. Not bad considering they were 8-0 down after that first inning, got yeah. first half, top half first inning. Now they're 10-9 up, still no out, curling Alvarez at the plate. Adam Hugel taking his time out there. Hits it deep. It's caught. Great catch. LaRue on the tag gets to second. One away. Great catch by Max Fagan in right center field. It was he that came across in that previous play, wasn't it, to try and make the play in right field? Yeah. Would I mean, it wasn't really his ball, but the right fielder didn't show that much sign of going for it. So, Michelle Shaw at the plate. Michelle Shaw at that. Pops up. Just pulls, drops it. Throw to first. Shaw's out. But LaRue manages to run to third. Ball was popped straight up in the air in front of home plate. The catcher, Jacqueline Ng, went out, dropped off her glove, but uh, Adam Hugo was able to pick it up and throw Michelle out. So two down now, and uh, a runner at third base. A strike to Amokar Gomez. Gomez swings high, it's deep. It's gone. Home run to Gomez. Two runs score. So it brings home LaRue. So how quickly it changes, Bob. Fence in left center field towards center field. When you see outfielders with their back to home plate, you kind of know what's yeah. going to happen. <laughs> you tell me, what's the distance for the fence here at Final Park? Fences are 285 feet. I think well, they should be. Right. This is a movable fence, so I'm not sure whether that's the distance or whether it's farther, but um, the fixed fences are 285. That drops fair. You know, Emma Lott drops the single down the left field line, and the uh, Tempest onslaught continues, albeit with two out. It brings Billy Lycouris to the plate. Billy has a double to his name and two at bats. As we mentioned previously, the only left-handed batter in this game. Do you get much sure in these days of the way switch hitting in softball at all? Do you get much twi switch hitting in baseball? You know, uh, bat players who bat left and right. Um, Do you see it much at all? No, or? because there's no real advantage in slow right. softball. That ball goes foul. Bring him back to the plate. Now you feel it, 
Actually, the concept of the switch hitter in baseball or fast pitch is you've got a split second longer to see the ball if the pitcher's on the opposite side, but with the pitch floating in here, yeah, not much, uh, not much point. Foul ball for Lakuris. I think the uh, outfielders know which direction it's going, Bob. Counts <laughs> it. Plays at first. Out. And that brings us to the end of the inning. Back for the top of the fifth inning. Charlene Christoffi at bat for the Camels, now trailing by 12 to 9, trailing for the first time in the game. And there was a substitution there during the break, Bob? The uh, Camels have put Andy Lott into left field in place of Matty Green, and he will bat 1, 2, 3, 4, th fifth in this inning if it gets, gets down there. by left center. Base hit into left center field for Charlene Christoffi and that brings Gareth Evans to the plate. The Camels second baseman. Camels need some runs getting into the second half of the ball game. Gareth takes the ball from pitcher Simon Timms. Of course the eight run first inning and only one running the next four, I uh, sorry, three. It's going to be ball two, and at this point, Camels need to be patient. They need to not swing it. Anything that looks like a ball, but there's a strike dropped over the outside corner. It's a lovely pitch in there. <laughs> <laughs> the batter is hit by the pitch, which is, of course, ball three rather than going to first base. Three and one on Gareth Evans and uh, a walk would be uh, a good outcome for Camels. And that's what exactly what he's going to get. It's a bit too low. So he will go to second base. Charlene Christophe will go to third and that'll bring up Sarah Casson, the right fielder. Straight at the shortstop, plays it first. One that comes home. It's called safe. One scores. Um, I think uh, the umpire was a little uncertain there because the uh, slide by Charlene I thought left her a bit short, short of the yeah. plate. 
But uh, she, I think, she managed to get a toe in there before the tag went down, or so the umpire thought. I, uh, my first impression was the other way that she was out because you, she did come up short as she was sliding home. It did look that way, and he thought he thought about it, but um, so that's one down and run in for the Camels, which makes the uh, score twelve ten. And this is uh, Andy Lott, the, uh, the substitute. He lines a solid base hit into right center field. Matty Green stops the third. Andy Lott, of course, is the uh, brother of Emma Lott, who is playing for Tempest. family connection there. This is Jacqueline Ng, the catcher, taking a strike. So two on, one down. One on one count. It's a walk. Oh no, it's ball, no, it's ball three. I thought it was one for one short. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was a little eager to uh, trying to uh, hoodwink Alex Chelsea there. <laughs> <laughs> so the count is three and one. There you go. Now, sh oh, oh! I think uh, everyone was a little surprised by that. The ball looked wide at the outside corner, but maybe just clipped it. It'll hit into the gap. She gets the first, run to safe at second. And Evans comes home for another run. Which uh, just as good as a walk. Achieved the same result. So Camels now have runners on first and second, still just one out. And the lineup is turned over, so we're back to shortstop Nathan Barrett. Nathan has two hits out of three trips to the plate. Chance to turn the game back in his team's favor. So that one comes up short. <laughs> Skies it, that's gonna go foul. Uh, Thankfully, someone stopped that ball, Bob, because my car's in the direct line of that. <laughs> Surprised you parked there. Uh, well, I got here late, so there's any space available. <laughs> now I know why. It's a ball wide, so two and two to Nathan Barrett. And wow. he is going to be out on a third strike foul. Two away. Not what Camel's needed. So Sophie Addison to the plate. So Sophie two also has Runners in first and second. Sorry, Bob. Two hits and three trips to the plate so far. But she need Campbell's needed to do something here. A little pop foul off to the left, which no one is going to get. Just Drops in front of the uh, the dugout. And Michelle Shaw and Lily Mitchell both went for it. Neither could get there. I didn't think they had any chance, to be honest. That was fast and it was too far away. Swing and a miss. <laughs> <laughs> Not happy about that. A uh, little, little embarrassed. What usually happens is the next pitch gets kind of driven, but uh, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, don't, you don't fan at the ball twice. <laughs> no balls and two strikes to Sophie. That's going to that's go gonna be foul. Third, third strike foul out. And that's going to end the inning.
into a run one lead over Camels, and Emma Agostini leads off for Tempest. Adam Hugo throws the ball inside that he thought probably caught the inside corner. Line drive straight to third base. She can't catch it though. And Agostini will make it to first. Just hit off the glove, didn't it? Sharp line drive. Probably should have been caught. Charlene Christolfi at uh, third base, but she wouldn't have had much time to react to that. It was quite as well hit, wasn't it? Yeah. So Hadwin at the plate. High and outside for ball one. Taking the lead for the first time in the game. Tempest now looking to try and build on what is currently a one run advantage. Hands on the plate. 3 0, oh and uh, a walk here is not what Camels need. Strike 3 and 1. Oh, Steve. Oh, well left. So put runners into scoring position. So Brad goes to second, Emma to third. The batter will be Lily Mitchell. Pitch is short for ball one. Since this is a dangerous inning for the Camels, they need to limit the damage here. Yeah, Tempest in a great position. Mitchell puts it into right field. It's fair. One run scores. Second one in. She stays at first. Two runs batted in. Excellent hit by Lenny Mitchell. Just down the right field line. Always going to score two runs. Still no one out in the uh, top of the lineup now with Simon Timms. Swings at first pitch. Gets past shortstop. Single for his effort. As Mitchell gets to second. I think Nathan Barrett might have been a little slow to react to that, but... Um, Tempest are looking to kind of put the game away here, I think. Two in, two on, no one out. Zoe LaRue is the batter. Into left field, it's in the gap. It's fielded, runners move up one base. So the bases are loaded. Base is loaded for Hurley Alvarez, and that's the player that Tempest would most like to be up in this situation. He set two, two hits and three trips to the plate and flew out uh, deep to right field, so Tempest will be looking for something here that can bring a couple runs in. Hits it along the ground. Chance for a double play. Out of second, overthrows first. We get two runs home. As Mitchell and Tim's both score. Just the inning they wanted. I think you could question the uh, decision by Nathan Barrett there to run to the bag, which took a lot of time. He was never going to get um, Hurling Alvarez at first base, threw the ball anyway, overthrew it, which um, led to the second run. Somehow that ball by Michelle Shaw creeps through past the pitcher, past second base. Alvarez moves to third. Just 
Again, that bounce off the, the hard infield, it just kind of eluded everybody, went through the gap up to the right of second base. Amilcar Gomez at bat. Are you happy, Bob? He's got a Yankees cap on. Are you okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> Play to the plate for a ball. Is it into the ground? Not hold it, it's out at second. So two away, but a run scores. So the ball kind of bounced off the uh, glove of Nathan Barrett and Short, but right over to uh, second base where Gareth Evans was able to pick it up and step on the bag. So Camels have their first out slightly fortuitously, but five runs are now scored for Tempest. Moves Emma Lott to the plate. Straight at third throw to second, out at second, and that brings us to the end of the inning. I mean, like 17 to 11, Bob, am I correct? Yep, 17 to 11. So just the inning they wanted after, obviously, um, Camels had come back into it. Camels have just two innings now to pull this back. So who's, um, who's impressed you the most so far? Has anyone really stood out for you in this game? Um, I think I've been impressed by Emma Agostini on uh, campus who hits the ball very hard. Michelle Shaw has hit the ball very hard for campus. Um, Camels, um, Camels have, yeah, they, they're a good base hitting team, but they're they made some mistakes in the field, which I think has let uh, the Tempest take control of this game. So Michael Elsie comes into right field. For Tempest. Place of Brad Hadwin. Brad Hadwin, right, okay. So he's bad in ninth. So, yep. Hugel's at the plate, he hits it, it's long, and it bounces out. Dead ball, he can move to second. So just while we're getting notification, a little substitution. Hugel with a great hit to start the bottom, sorry, the top of the sixth inning. So ground rule double for uh, Adam Hugel. of Michael Elsie coming in for Brad Hadwin. Tempest. Sh Charlotte Green at the bat at that. Makes an outside corner strike. So the, the sun's behind us, Bob. It's starting to go down. How would you does it affect the outfield much? Or well it's, in, it's in the infield. It's gonna be in their eyes, I think. Um, it's getting fairly low on the horizon, but um, I think the uh, left see side the shadow starting to grow, can't we? And the yeah, from the netting and rounds. Base it's green, it's straight to the pitcher. Out at first. <laughs> Hugh was going to try for third. <laughs> There's He's no one there. It. Yep, just a fielding error allowed an opportunity. He did think about it initially, didn't he? Then he went back because of the fielding mistake, we should call it. He got a chance to advance to third as Max Fagin comes up to play. That's going foul. Hit hard, but fouled on the left field line. He's hit a few foul balls, uh, balls, I think, doesn't he, in this game? 
Yeah, he fouled out. Um, I think it was three straight fouls. A couple, balls, of, inning, couple it, yeah. of innings ago. He really needs to uh, do something here that brings in that run from third base, and he has done. That lovely. But it's caught. Cool. Oh, lovely by right center. Is that Mitchell out there? There's Lenny Mitchell out there. Drives in the run. So Camels do get a run, but it's not really enough. They need uh, multiple runs this inning. So two down and Charlie uh, Christoffi at the plate. It's a good inning so far for Tempest. It's up in the air and caught. And that brings us to the end of the top of the six. No score. It remains 17 to 11 in favour of Tempest. 17 12. Yeah, 17 12. Still a five run deficit, and they're only going to have one more trip to the plate. And meanwhile, of course, they have to try and keep Tempest down in the bottom of the sixth inning. advantage and it'll be uh, Billy Lycouris leading off the second baseman and for Camels the mission here is to have a scoreless inning yeah you really need that three up three down it's about hit short Catch has it, tags like Curious <laughs> for the first out. Just stayed in play, Bob. Nice play by Adam Eagle. <coughs> kind of scooped up a short stop and a short hop and applied the tag. Uh, Normally, of course, the winner of this game would be promoted to uh, NSL 1, or the winner of the, the league would be promoted to NSL 1. That's not happening this year because it's a COVID year. There's another long drive by Emma Agostini, but that's going to be caught. So, at the moment, is Camels are getting what they needed. Yeah, two to two out. Next year, um, two teams will go up from NSL two to NSL one, assuming a normal year. That's the league, and then this, yes. Yeah. So that's LZ up to bat. Michael LZ came in for uh, Brad Hadwin. It's his first at bat in the game. Straight of third base goes past. He's safely on to base. He's going to be held at first. Hard bouncing ball past uh, Charlene. Just Always good when you come into a game late to get a hit straight away in your first at bat. Yeah, not much she could do about that. It was past her before she could really react to it. So, Lily Mitchell. He's had a really good game for Tempest. Come up some big plays both defensively and offensively. First one goes past the plate for a ball. So we can add insurance run or two. Lily has a couple of hits in this game. She scored three times. Spent a lot of time on base. Reached on an error in her other at bat. It's it into right field. Out and that's just what the camels needed, Bob. Exactly what they needed. They achieved their aim, but they're still, as we go into the last inning, five runs behind.
Welcome back to Farnham Park, top of the seventh inning. And the Camels have it all to do. And they're down towards the bottom of their order. So Gareth Evans leading off. First one go past him for a ball. Need runs. First, they need base runners. Gareth Evans will want Simon Tibbs to throw a strike before he swings at anything, and there it is. Full count. Oh, three and one. He's got the walk. I don't know if he looks disappointed there, but we <laughs> able to hit it. <laughs> that move him up to second base. Gareth taking his time uh, getting to second base. <laughs> that brings up uh, Sarah Casson. Yeah, that could maybe could be a new rule change, Bob. If you if you get a walk, just run straight to second until <laughs> they go around first. That's a strike, <coughs> one and one to Sarah Casson. Again, she'll be patient, see if Simon Timms will give her anything, but um, in the end, she may have to swing. She does. High fly ball, it's catchable, and it is. Evans fakes a little run and stays on second. Yeah, so one away. The outfielder didn't have to move. Andy Lott. Andy Lott, for his second at bat of the game, having come in as a uh, sub for Maddie Green. Takes strike one. You kind of sense uh, hope fading here for the Camels. But there's Lucky a base hit. Five into the outfield. That should bring Havens home. Throw comes in. <laughs> Lott stays on first. <laughs> one run is scored. Again, taking his time, but I don't think Tempest were too bothered about the run. They wanted to keep um, Andy Lott on first, which they did. Keeps the double play in order with Jack Woody coming to the plate. And this could be it. Double play. No, she makes Safe it. Safe at first, just one out. So two away. One more out needed. Looked like a Taylor made double play, but Jacqueline didn't got down the line really quickly. Kept the game alive. The Camels are down to their last out. Top of the order, Nathan Barrett up to bat. Puts it up. It's catchable. There you go. Ball game. Camels win it. So Camels win it. Tempest win it. Tempest win it. Yes, sorry. 17-13. <laughs> and they are the uh, NSL2 champions for 2021. And they've come back from 8-0 down in that top half of the first inning. That's a great comeback. It is. I mean, they... Completely of course, changed the game on its head, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, it came very early, so they had the rest of the game to come back. But still... I'll give you credit, Bob, because you said right in that first inning, you, you said... Just plenty of time. They can come back, no problem. And and they've done it in style as well. In style, they're a solid team. They, you're know, a good hitting team. I think they made fewer mistakes in the field than uh, Campbell's did. So, any players really who really stood out for you the most today? Uh, I was in, I was impressed with Mitchell myself, both batting and fielding. You've got the uh, stats in front of you. <laughs> well, I think Amilcar Gomez for the couple of home runs. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to look at him. Um, on the uh, Camel side, you could look at Sophie Addison. Um, get a couple of base hits. <laughs> yes, <coughs> it's difficult because no, no one player certainly dominated this game. Emma Agostini hit the ball very hard, but in fact only had the one hit. Um, Lenny Mitchell had a couple of hits, three runs scored. So um, 
It's going to be a little bit tough picking the MVPs. But if I put you on the spot, then horrible as that is, <laughs> who would you personally? Um, oh, I think I'd have to spend a little bit more time studying that. We'll leave it to Jenny, our uh, our scorer here. But um, so we now have uh, a little bit of an interval, and then um, we're going to have the championship game for NSL One, which is between the traveling Dodgers, which is not a huge surprise, in KK's, which which is. And the the biggest thing is that it's really a change of the guard in NSL One because none of the three top seeds, the Pioneers, the Chromies, or H2O, have made it through to the final. And in fact, Chromies and H2O didn't even make the playoffs. So things are certainly Which is changing in itself, NSL One. Uh, I think Traveling Dodgers will have to be favored. They're a powerful team. They they came out uh, top of the round robin. KK's um, had some upsets, um, not least the Pioneers in the, uh, the semifinal that preceded this, but um, we'll see if KK's can pull off another upset when we get to the NSL 1 final. So that is going to do it for the NSL 2 final, where Tempest, after going behind 8-0, to zero, run out 17-13 to 13 winners over the camels himself and Bob but join us shortly for that NSL 1 final it promises it to be a very entertaining game <laughs>